Hey everybody! Today, Rado runs through Dinosaur Island, which is a new worker placement game where players are trying to make the best gosh darn Jurassic Park knockoff that they can. I'm going to show you how it works today in a two-player run-through, although before I get going, please, please, please turn your subtitles onto the Klingon channel, so when I make rules goofs, you'll know what they are. Okay, have you done so? Then welcome to Dinosaur Island. Here we go. There is a bunch of stuff, a big riotous explosion of color for all the worker placement, but this is only half the game. This is where uh, every round players work their way through phase one and phase two, but phases three and four happen on players' own boards. I've got my board here for phase three, which is where my lab is, and I basically splice DNA to make dinosaurs. And phase four is my actual park, where I've already got one dinosaur waiting for tourists to come and look at it. It is a... Uh, a uh, 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 Musarus. Uh, Alrighty. I've got one, and uh, it's a nice little dinosaur. Uh, and I could potentially breed some more of these, or I've got a lot of space here to start developing other strains of dinosaurs um, or other attractions. For instance, I've got a hat shop that people can come uh, to as well. But there's going to be a lot more I add to my park over the course of the game. Now, um, as part of setup, we choose five dice in a two-player game, or it's double the number of players plus one. So we're playing two-player games, so there are five of these DNA dice, and so in this two-player game, these dice are going to be left out, which is important because all these dice are unique. This is the only die in the game that could potentially give you more workers, and in another game, it might be not have been here, and it might have been this one that can do this wild card result instead. But anyway, in this game, these five dice are available. These are the new um, breeds of dinosaur we can get. Velociraptor, uh, Sarofagnax and Ankylosaurus. So, uh, uh, you know, this is a herbivore, a small carnivore, and a big carnivore. So we've got unique dice, we've got some new dinosaurs. Also, there are going to be some objectives. Uh, in this game, we're playing a medium length game. So we've got three objectives in a two player game, more with more players. Uh, there's an objective worth seven points to fill all but four zones of your park, have nine dinosaurs in your park, or have 15 DNA in cold storage. Now, when two of those three objectives have been completed by players, that's what triggers the end of the game. So these are the things that we're racing to try to do. Also, every time you play, there's going to be a couple of plot twists. In this one, we've got this and this, but there are a bunch more. There's a whole big deck of them, and I'm looking around. I cannot seem to find that deck of cards. Oh, here it is, here it is, here it is. So... Uh, in this game, our plot twists are, at the end of every round, we can increase our cold storage limits by one for a single DNA type. That's actually really cool because, one, you know, that dovetails nicely into this objective of having 15 DNA in storage. Our, our storage maximums are going to increase every round. And this other plot twist is at the end of every round, so both these happen at the end of the round. Each player can choose a bonus, either increase your security level, upgrade a paddock capacity, or gain two DNA. So, um, but, you know, our, I mean, there are lots of other plot twists. Uh, each player can hire an additional specialist during the game. Normally you can only have two, but in this game you could have three specialists if this were the plot twist. Or, I'm sorry, you can have three, but, you know, this would let you have four. Or each player starts with five workers instead of four. Or um, each player gains one advanced DNA at the end of every round. Oh, that's pretty nice. Um, you know, so, lots of different plot twists that will mix and match to make the game play different. And lots of different objectives. Although, interestingly, you can go for objectives that are for the short game, the medium game, or the long game, if you like. So, tons of variety. Every time you play, you're going to get a different combination of twists and objectives to chase after. A uh, different set of dice that will make different um, DNA strains more or less prevalent than they might be in different games. So, there's certain rarities, different dinosaurs that come out, and different specialists. As part of the setup, we got four specialists out here, four upgrades to our lab, and four attractions that we can build and add to our park. A um, sunglasses hut, a jeans... Uh, uh, what is this? I can't quite read. Uh, gene splice dogs. Ah, it's not hot dogs. It's gene splice dogs. Uh, so some food, a hyper coaster, and hot air balloon rides. Yay! Okay. So uh, that's the situation. We are ready to go. Let's begin with, you can't quite see it, 
phase one. I should say, by the way, um, you, you normally keep these off. This is our victory point track. I'm trying to keep everything on camera. So uh, obviously, th this is a big thing that we can keep track. And everybody starts, by the way, with 10 victory points right off the bat. Just having built a dinosaur park gets us a lot of points. But that means we've got a lot of points to lose. Also, because each of us started with one dinosaur, but he's a nice little friendly herbivore, we each have an excitement level of one. That means um, one a person is going to come to our park unless we increase the excitement level by getting more dinosaurs. Also, that one little dinosaur we've got has put our threat level at one, which is no big deal because our security level is also at one. And finally, we start with one of each of the three basic DNAs, no advanced DNA, and we have certain limits. You cannot have more than three of any basic DNA and one of any advanced DNA unless you increase your cold storage potential. So. That's it. All right, folks. Uh, a lot of stuff. We are now ready to get going. I am the first player. And like I said, we're starting out here in phase one. Now, this is the first of two separate worker placement phases. And in this one, it's more of a traditional worker placement where everybody is competing for limited spaces. At the beginning of the game, each player has a level one, two, and three scientist that we will be... Um, <clears throat> Oh, excuse me, that we will be uh, trying to uh, send out to do stuff. So, um, but before we do that, we have to roll the DNA dice and see what opportunities are available in this phase one worker placement section. So, what do we got? Okay, some blue DNA, a double uh, aqua DNA, uh, another blue DNA, and, ooh, any one advanced DNA of your choice, and, ooh, wow, um, any three regular DNA of your choice. So, these are available. So, these five, and of course, with more players, there would be more dice rolling and more worker placement spots, but these are the dice that we can take turns grabbing with our scientists, or instead of grabbing access to this DNA, we could be the first to um, learn how to breed or you know genetically create these types of dinosaurs so we can add them to our park and create more uh, excitement so that more tourists will come to our park. Or we could increase our cold storage. Remember I was talking about this. I can only hold so this much, one of advanced DNA, but I could increase my cold storage so I could hold more of a given type of DNA. Remember, one of our goals is to have 15 DNA in storage. That's impossible right now. The most we can have is nine. 10, 11, 12. We, I mean, you know, if I filled all of these up, I'd have 12. So I need to increase because then if I were to fill all these up, hey, I could be the first to um, complete this. And um, if you complete it in a round and nobody else completes it in that round, you'll be the only one to get it. So we're racing to get a bunch of DNA in storage to have nine dinosaurs or fill all but four zones of our park. Right. So do I want to learn a new dinosaur with this space, this space, this space? Do I want to grab one of these dice to start collecting some DNA? Because without those uh, DNA samples, I can't make th these dinosaurs. You can see the Velociraptor um, requires the aqua, the purple, and two of the dark blue, and one of the special yellow advanced. So I need to have a lot of DNA to make a Velociraptor. But hey, it really increases the uh, excitement level of my park. So probably worth doing. But um, <clears throat> let's see here. Let's start out with increase my storage. Or if I want, I can have one of my scientists pass, which means he won't do anything in phase one. But that means he'll be available to could do work for me during phase three. During phase three, I've got my park workers here who can work in the labs and whatnot. These aren't necessarily scientists. If I wanted to, right now, so I can do four actions when we get to phase three. If I wanted to be able to do five, I could send my little wussy level one scientist here, which means he'll be available to work during phase three if I wanted to do that. But I don't want to do that. I want to take advantage of all the good stuff that's out here, particularly the fact that there could be any um, one or one or more of one of the advanced DNA of my choice. So I think I'm going to go ahead and grab that. So uh, I will go here with my level one scientist, which means I can only get one of a given type of DNA, which is kind of a bummer. If I sent my level three scientist, I could get three of the advanced DNA of my choice. But the problem with that is, 
I've only got storage for one. So, I mean, what I could do, if I were the only worker, I'd, what I'd probably do, first of all, is send my level two guy over here to uh, cold storage. And since I sent my two, I could increase one of my storage levels by two. So I'd go boom, boom. That means, hey, now I could hold a bunch of this. And then I'd send my level three here, and I could get all three of it, and I'd have a whole bunch of advanced DNA. But the chances are, if I don't snag this right now, Jen will. So, since I don't have a lot of storage for advanced DNA, I'll just go on ahead and send my level one guy over here, which means I can get one of the red, the yellow, or the green. And by the way, if you're colorblind, no big deal. Uh, there's unique symbols and shapes for all the different DNA. So I came here with my level one, which means I can get one. I'll take this yellow because I'm already thinking that I'm going to try and get a, a better dinosaur in my park rather than just my little wussy, not particularly exciting guys. Velociraptors for the advanced DNA require the yellow, as does the uh, uh, Sarfagonax. Um, they also require yellow, although they also they require one of each of the three advanced. So I'm hoping with my next worker placement, uh, with my level two or my level three scientist, I can come over to this space and get Velociraptors because I'll have the, some of the DNA I need. So anyway, so that was my first action. I've grabbed this and this die is basically now out of the equation. There's still four more dice to grab though. So now Jen, she has the same three types of workers as me. And where is she going to go? She will, um, she's thinking, I want to get, I want to start getting my DNA up uh, PDQ. So she's going to send her level three scientist to increase the DNA cold storage limits uh, in any combination by number equal. So Jen can increase her storage limits by three. And what is she going to do? I think, well, first of all, the basic dinosaur in Jen's park, the, oh, what is it over here? It's the uh, uh, Galaminius, G Galaminus requires, well, actually, it's two DNA of any of the three basic types. So, okay, so Jen just wants, she could increase her advance, but she just wants basic stuff. Um, and remember, let's see here. I think what she'll do is she will increase the, um, the purple by one, two, three. So, I mean, she could have spread that out, she could, but she just increased this. So now she can hold two, three, four, five. She can hold five purple. Okay. So that was Jen's first turn. And now you can see there's still plenty of options. I've still got my two scientists. I could come here or here. Um, but what am I going to do? Jen didn't take it. So I'm going to send my number two over here and learn how to make Velociraptors. Now this, I take it and I go on ahead and I put it on my park. So it is now gobbling up more space. And remember, another one of our objectives is fill all but four zones in your park. I've still got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven spaces. So I'm on my way to filling my park up because I can start developing Velociraptors. Although I need some more DNA. I've got this DNA. I've got um, one of each of the basics. I need one more of these to make a Velociraptor. So I'll worry about that in a bit. So that was my second action. And now you can see there are no more small carnivores for this round. It is now Jen's turn. She's going to send her level two guy over here. And this is a special one. Hey, Jen can get two of, uh, you know, two of any basics she wants. So, uh, you know, three times. So let's see. Since she has a lot of storage for this purple, actually, wait a minute. One, two, three, four, five. Actually, I think she went like this. And let's say she went like this. Then she's got one, two, three. Yeah. Okay. So she's going to get two purples. One, two, and then two more purples, three, four, because she sent her level two. And now, what the heck, she'll get two of these blues. One, two. So Jen just got um, three times two. She just got six DNA. And she's on her way to having enough DNA stored to get that seven. Although, of course, she wants to use this DNA to make dinosaurs, too. So let's worry about that in a second. So that was Jen's um, work, second worker placement action. Now I've got one more. I saved my big number three, which means, hey, I could send him over here and get the, the really big, the, however you want to say this particular dinosaur's name. He needs all kinds of stuff. But man, he is a very exciting dinosaur. He would increase my park's excitement level three, which means more people are coming. Um, or I could increase my storage level by three. Or I could get three of this, three of this, or six of this. Although, but again, the problem is, since I didn't increase my storage limits, I can only store two of any of the basics. Hmm. Um, I'll go on ahead. Let's see. Now, I know Jen can store a lot more, 
So I think, uh, all right, oh, so, and by the way, Jen, she eliminated that die. I'm going to come here, not because this does particularly good for me, but I know Jen, um, she's only got her level one scientist left. So if she comes here, she gets one. If she comes here, she gets one. If she comes here, she gets two. And so I'm just going to prevent her from being able to grab that. I'm doing this, which means I get three times two. I get six of these blues, but unfortunately, it's largely wasted because I don't have much storage. All right. And so now that was my last scientist. Jen, she could come over here to get one of that light blue, or I'm sorry, the dark blue, but you know what? She already completely filled up on that. She can't store any more of that. She could come down here and increase her storage potential. She could come over here and get the ankylosaur. So she's got a different type of <clears throat> dinosaur she could develop. Or she could say, you know what, my last scientist, he's not going to do any work. Um, and so he could, she could pass, which means Jen will have five workers in phase three instead of four. <clears throat> yeah, what the heck? No, no, no. I think Jen wants to have more exciting dinosaurs too. So she'll just get an ankylosaur. So she has developed this. It gets added to hers because um, she only needed a level one. So that's it. Now, we left two dice here that didn't get claimed. And what that means is that has the potential to increase the danger of our park. The, you know, like Jurassic Park, people, tourists can come here and get eaten. And that makes us lose victory points. That's why we have 10 victory points at the beginning of the game, because if people get eaten in our park, well, it doesn't reflect well on us. So um, what happens is we look at the dice that are left over, um, and we look at these little pips. We take the highest pip value. This is a one and this is one. So it doesn't matter which one we take. We take it over here. And because this die is here, that represents some additional threat that is happening this round. Currently, I've got just one little dinky dinosaur that creates one threat. And you know that is marked on my threat meter here. But when we have to check to see if our, our patrons are being eaten, because this is here, there's going to be level two threat. Now, what's interesting is if, say, Jen or I hadn't taken this one, there, it would come over here because it has two pips. That means there would be two additional threat that everybody would face this turn. But as it is, we got the more threatening dice out of the way. And so there's only going to be one additional level of threat this round. All right. Phase one is done, folks. Our scientists are done. We both put them to work completely. And um, <clears throat> sorry, none of them pass so they can go to phase two. Or I'm sorry, to phase three. But now... Let's talk about phase two. It's market time. Now, I didn't mention at the beginning of the game, I started as the first player with 15 bucks. Jen, because she's the second player, starts with 16. And now is our opportunity to spend money over here in the market, to spend two, three, four, or five bucks to get various and sundry upgrades, different specialists who can give us special powers, different upgrades to our labs, and, and additional attractions to our park. I am the first player. So what do I want to grab? Although the interesting thing, um, I get to each player gets to do two market actions every round. So I'm going to buy something, then Jen's going to buy something, and then I'll buy something else from the remaining, and then Jen will buy something. Although if you if there's nothing out there you want to buy, you can pass on one or both of your buying opportunities and get two or four extra bucks that you'll use in phase four. But looking around, you know what? I think I want to get a specialist. In this game, we can have up to three specialists. And they uh, not only do they give us special powers, but some of them also increase our park worker pool. At the, in this game, we have four workers. If I hire this ride designer, who will only cost me two because he's in the top row, he'll give me a special power and he'll give me another worker. So you know what? Let's go cheap. Let's go on ahead and do this. I'm going to spend two for my first purchase on this guy, so there's a five, I get three and change, and I have a specialist, which is um, during phase four, when patrons are trying to stream into my park because they're so excited about what I've got, uh, I can squeeze an extra one onto one of my rides, although at this point I don't have any rides. There is this hyper coaster. If I buy this, I've got a ride that people will enjoy, I and it can hold up to three patrons. Because I've got a ride designer, I could actually make it hold four and get more victory points. But more importantly, that's nice if I get some rides, but what I really care about is I have just increased my worker pool. I started out only having access to four workers, but I just added a fifth. My ride designer is going to be ready to do worker placement in phase three. So uh, this is my first of three specialists I've got. If I get a fourth specialist, I got to dump one of my earlier ones and lose the ability of it. So I got a specialist. Now it is Jen's turn. And boy, 
So this security guard is really cool um, because again, it increases your worker pool and get $1 for each two hooligans you get in your park. That's really nice because when we get to phase four and we open our park doors and people come in, the game comes with a big bag full of park doors. And you can see in there, most of them are golden. That means they're good paying customers who will give money, but some of them are purple. Those are the ne'er-do-wells. Those are the hooligans who will take up valuable space in our park and give us no money. We don't want those purples, but there's a random chance you might end up drawing some of them. Having a security guard means that if I, in a given round I end up pu pulling two hooligans into my park, at least I'll make a buck for, I guess, kicking them out and sending them off to uh, the local who's gal. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, so Jen could get that, but it would cost her five because he's in the most expensive slot. Now, if nobody gets him next round, he's um, anything that doesn't get taken slides up, so he's going to get cheaper. Next round, he'll only cost four to hire instead. And in the meantime, if Jen doesn't want more workers, uh, she doesn't have to go for that. She could go for jack of all trades. She, he doesn't increase their workforce and costs four. But what he does is, once per round, you can assign a worker as a second scientist. So one of Jen's workers that she, uh, or as a level two scientist, one of Jen's workers she uses in phase three, she could instead use in phase one to get more DNA or more dinosaur plans or what have you. So this jack of all trades, it would give Jen more flexibility. Or a computer programmer. Once per round, when another player assigns a scientist to research DNA. Like you saw, Jen and I both assigned scientists to research DNA in this first round. When you see somebody doing that, I guess you can hack their computers and gain the same DNA that they do. So this is every round for the rest of the game. Chances are you'll be able to get some free DNA. And it would cost three for Jen to hire that person. But you know what? Jen doesn't have to hire people. Instead, she could um, get dino security improvements or a renovation committee or a trans... Uh, Mogrifier, which basically lets her exchange one or two DNA for one or two DNA of the same So she can turn DNA into other DNA if she's got a particular recipe she needs. And let's remember her recipe. Jen needs this blue and this light blue, and she needs green, advanced DNA, to be able to make an ankylosaur to increase the attraction level and the excitement of her park so she can score more points. So Jen's looking for a way to get green DNA. She's already got plenty of the rest. Um, the transmogrifier won't let her upgrade stuff, though, unfortunately. But there is an interesting thing. When we get to phase three, one of the things Jen can do is she can send one of her workers over here to the DNA refinement part of her lab. And over here, she could convert a purple and a dark blue, or I'm sorry, a purple and a light, or the light blue and the dark blue into the green she's going to need. And she's got plenty of those. She got a whole bunch of them. So she's going to be able to get the green she needs. But here's an interesting thing. We're not in phase three yet. Jen could upgrade her DNA refinement capability. It's this one right here. It would cost her five. Instead of paying five to get this guy or Dino Security or a hot air balloon ride, she could upgrade her park. And that means she can do DNA refinement with three of her workers instead of just one. So she could make a whole bunch of this stuff so that she can make a lot more dinosaurs instead of only one per turn. So that's kind of interesting. I think Jen will do that. Jen's going to pay five um, to refine DNA. Now, she cannot buy this again. You can see there's another one. I could get this purchase if I want to eventually. But Jen is going to be able to get more green DNA because she's potentially planning on getting more dinos. Okay, so that was Jen's first purchase. Now I can make a second purchase. Or if I want, I can pass and just make a couple more bucks. But what else do I want? Huh, let's see. You know, I've got that, that um, ride designer, so I want some rides. I think I'll go on ahead and spend four of my starting 15 to get... Oh, I'm sorry, no, it's not four. It's four plus seven. So I just paid four. Let's pay seven more. Wow, this almost bankrupts me. But now I've got a hyper coaster. This can hold up to three people, which means up to three, um, three victory points every round. But if I have an exciting enough park, I can ultimately have four people on here because of my ride designer so that I can be making four points off of this every turn once my park is exciting enough to attract four people. So, and now this is a tricky thing. I mean, if again, if I waited, this is always going to cost seven plus five, four, three, or two. If I waited a few rounds, this could go down to being only costing um, nine bucks instead of 11 bucks. I just paid 11 for it, but what the heck, let's go for it, and I'll just go ahead and install that in my park. So my park now has a Velociraptor pen, um, the uh, Mosasaurus pen, and a Hypercoaster, and a Hat Shop. 
Um, and I've still got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten spaces. Once I fill six more of these spaces in, I'll be down to four, and I will have completed fill out all but four Zonjima Park. Normally, you just keep this off to the side because you can have up to three. I'm just keeping it on the board so I can remind everybody that I've got that. He doesn't occupy spaces. All right, so that was my second and final market action in this first round. It is now Jen's turn to buy again and um, make right. So now another thing you can do, instead of getting specialists or lab upgrades or um, attractions, you can just get more DNA. You can spend four bucks to get any one advanced DNA you want. But Jen, she upgraded because she's actually going to make that DNA rather than spending money on it. Um, but you could get basic DNA, and remember, there's a race to get yourself completely full of DNA. Jen now can store up to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 regular DNA. And then, if she has two special DNA she, in a given turn, she could finish that. So maybe she just wants to, no, 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 but she's thinking next turn, she'll probably try and get a whole bunch of DNA um, and fulfill that objective in the second round. So does she want to get more basic DNA? I don't think she needs to. Well, she could, though. Does she want to get one of these things, though? Let's see. What does this do? Uh, this gives her a new worker placement stage for, for phase three. Increase your part, First of all, it increases your security level by one, just flat out. And uh, you can put workers here to increase your security even more. You know what? I think Jen values security. Jen's going to buy this because it only costs two. So um, there goes another five. Three and change. And that means at the end of the market phase, Jen still has nine bucks. I've got two. I am broke. And so Jen, whoops, sorry, not that. Jen takes that, um, what was it? It was the groundskeeper shack, and she puts it as one of her two upgrades. So she can have up to two. Later on, if she buys a third one, she'll have to basically take one of these offline and not be able to use it anymore. But Jen has just increased her park security for free to level two. And if she sends one of her workers here, it'll temporarily go up to three, so um, that effectively up to three uh, visitors are protected depending on how dangerous. Because remember, this round, um, the danger is one more because we didn't take that die. So anyway, we are done now with phase two. Both of us have done two market actions. And so now we are moving on to phase three, which means we're done with the central board. The, uh, phase one and phase two is where everybody's doing stuff in order. We do worker placement in order here. We do purchases over here. Now for phase three, Everybody turns inward and looks at their own board and the workers they've got. Remember, I've got four, my starting four plus the extra guy I got when I hired that park designer. And I've got all these worker placements. Say, I, I could refine DNA once. I could create one dinosaur with a single worker. If I wanted to create a second dinosaur, I'd have to, if I wanted to create two dinosaurs, I have to spend one, two, three workers. I can send as many guys as I want to my tool bench to upgrade my security or increase the paddock size. Or if I got nothing better for my guys to do, I can just have them come and get venture capital money. Uh, my first guy would get three. My second guy would get two. My third guy would get one. I could just make six bucks so I have more money for the next market phase. But And now everybody can do this simultaneously. Everybody's just doing their own individual research, putting their workers to work. Now, what I would like to do is get my Velociraptor made, um, which means one of my guys is going to have to come here to create a dinosaur. But before I do that, i got to have the right DNA. Um, I've got the blue. I've got the purple. I need one more of these dark blue. <gasps> oh, no. Shoot. I totally forgot. I only have one. I need two of the dark blue to make a velociraptor. Arg! I could have easily bought that. in. I didn't get it during phase one. I could have easily bought that during phase two. Shoot. Oh, and you know, I remember, remember what I did is... I came over here to prevent Jen from getting a big lion's share. I just said this guy over here because he would have given me the extra DNA I needed to make my dinosaur. So by doing that um, aggressive move to block Jen from getting a lot of stuff, I hurt myself. Hmm. You know what? Let's, right, okay. I mean, I definitely did this because, you know, that was the only way to get the special DNA. All right, so, and Jen did this. Hmm. You know, I think I will have done this instead. Let's just retire. If I'd been paying attention to what I actually need to make a Velociraptor, I would have realized I didn't need this. Well, actually, I do, though, don't I? 
Yeah, no, I only needed one, and I started with one of those. What I really needed was more of this. So I sent my three over here, which got me two, because that was all I could store. And so that means, hey, what do I need? I started with that, I started with that, I picked up that, and I got the yellow. So my first of my worker actions, again, everybody's doing this simultaneously, is to make a Velociraptor. I'll spend the uh, yellow I collected from the die, one, two of these, one of these, and one of these, and with all of that, I've got my first Velociraptor. Hooray! Now, Velociraptors have an excitement level of two, as you can see. So if we come over here, I've got to increase. I had one excitement level for my little wussy baby starting dinosaur, but now my excitement level has gone to three. But um, Velociraptors are dangerous. You can see for every one of them, they increase my park danger by two. So my threat has just increased one, two. Um, and my security is not ready to deal with that, which means um, if my security isn't up to the level of my threat, and don't forget, the threat is actually one higher. Ooh, because I didn't take this die, the threat is actually two higher. So really this round, the threat is gonna be at five, which means if I don't get my security up to five, people are gonna get eaten. Yeah. All right, so anyway, so my total danger is one for my Velociraptor and one for my uh, uh, Musaurus. All righty. So, and that was the first of my worker actions. I've still got a bunch more. Um, let's see, I know I've got to get my, so what I could do is, I could just have you increase my security, increase my security, increase my security. I could just put all four of these guys, and that goes one, two, three, four. And hey, if all of my people work on, instead of upgrading paddocks, which would give me more dinosaur storage, my Velociraptor pen only has room for one Velociraptor right there, but I could upgrade it so I have room for two, three, or even four Velociraptors, which increases the danger of my park. Um, so I could be upgrading capacity, but instead, I sent all four of these guys to increase my security level. So, one guy created a Velociraptor, everybody else worked on the security because you know how dangerous Velociraptors are. I think you all do. And that's it. I didn't make any money from the bank, which is a problem because I'm broke. That's going to mean I'm not going to have a very good market in the second round. I didn't refine any DNA, but that's okay because I got all the DNA I need off the dice and so I'm done. Ho 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 hold on there cowboy uh, let's not get carried away here I forgot one very important thing upgrading your security ain't free yeah sure I could put all four of them and get um, so that I'm not gonna worry about dino attacks but it costs me to jump from here to here would have been one two three four five six seven eight and at this point I've only got two bucks I can't afford that so let's rethink this for a second um, right so Oh uh, well, first of all, let's have one guy get some VC. So now I'm up to five bucks. Great. Now let's start working on that security. Hey, there goes one, and let's work on it some more. There goes two, three, and let's work on it some more. There goes three, four. All right, and now I'm totally broke. And I almost got my security as high as I would have liked, but it's not quite high enough. That means later on, one of my park goers is going to get munched. But you know what? That's not the end of the world. Uh, people know what they're getting into when they come to a Jurassic World, don't they? Don't they? Um, but that was the benefit of having this extra guy to make a little bit of capital. Um, but let's get back to it where I did not notice. I'm afraid to say this goof. So continuing on, I'm still going to think that I've got enough protection. But remember, I should be totally broke and um, one person, one visitor is going to die later on or it should die. And so I'm done. Uh, but I, while I was doing that, making a Velociraptor and increasing the excitement and threat if, in my park, Jen, meanwhile, over here, what was she going to do with her four workers? Because she only has four because she did not hire the security guard. Right, so she would like to start making ankylosaurs who also increase the uh, excitement level of a park by two. I guess they must be bigger or they got those big spiky tails, but only increases the threat by one. Because these are herbivores, they're less dangerous than a velociraptor, but they're also worth less points. For every one of these Jen um, creates by the end of the game, it's two points. Velociraptors are worth four points a pop um, because they're so much more dangerous and everybody wants to see them. So anyway, so what does Jen need? Jen needs um, green and the dark blue and the light blue. All right. So first of all, Jen is going to refine DNA. Remember, because she could do it a lot of times, she is going to turn a light blue and uh, this into a green. All righty. And so now she's going to send, oops, sorry, this is over here, to create a dinosaur. She's going to create an ankylosaur, which requires the green she just made plus the blue plus 
uh, the purple. Alrighty, and she's made her first Ankylosaur, which increases her park's excitement level by two, but her threat only by one. And now, hmm, uh, if Jen had one more worker, so Jen could send another worker here to basically create another green, but then um, she doesn't have enough, uh, but then she would need two workers to create a second dinosaur because she did not upgrade her dino research, which makes it cheaper to generate dinosaurs. So Jen could make a second one to be prepared for the future. Um, so she'll go ahead and do that. She'll make a second green. But now um, she's got one guy left. She would need two to make a dinosaur, and she's short one of these. So she can't do it. So for her last guy, wait a minute. Well, let's see. So Jen's threat is going to be up here. Um, oh, I forgot. Jen's security started at one, but it's increased to two because of the ground space. I think she needs to put this guy here to increase her security to, to three. Although, actually, no, that doesn't make much sense to put him here. This is a permanent increase. And by putting it over here, she increases it there. Um, and if she uh, had, this is a temporary thing, whereas this is permanent upgrades. So Jen has increased her security three. Now that's kind of a problem because, um, because of the two, Jen's threat is going to go up higher. Her security isn't going to quite make it. So I think because of that, Jen won't do a second DNA creation, even though she could. She'll save that for later. Instead, she sent a second guy down here to increase. So now, Jen's security meet needs are met as well. Um, which means, our, she didn't get, so we both created one dinosaur this turn. Remember, we're racing to be the first to have nine dinosaurs in our park. Jen, ah. now if, she, if she's willing to let a customer die, she could send this guy over here to make three more bucks. So she has more money for the second market phase. And you know, it's only one point lost for somebody to die. So what the heck? Let's say Jen, she increased her security it increased one permanently because of the groundkeeper shack. She increased it again, but it's not going to be high enough. She refined the DNA to make her first dinosaur, and she made three bucks. She's a little bit more lax about security than she originally planned to be. All right, so we're both done with phase three. If Jen had one more worker, she would have done a little bit better. But again, I've, there's a lot to think about in this game, a lot of planning that can go on. But we'll, go, we'll live with that for now. And Jen's got her ankylosaur. I've got my Velociraptor, and phase three is done. Now, finally, folks, we move on to phase four, which again, everybody can do simultaneously, although it's certainly more fun to watch. So um, what we do is, see, Ride Designer, you're not actually part of this. Um, I have got a total excitement level of three. Uh, the, the, you know, this creates excitement of one, a single Velociraptor creates two. If I get another Velociraptor, my excitement level will go to five. The excitement level determines how many visitors are gonna come to my park. Both Jen and I are basically going to come back to this bag, which remember, is, has some hoodlums in there. We don't want those. We're each going to get to draw three, and we're both hoping to draw gold, no hoodlums. All right, let's see what we get. I draw one, two, three, and I got a hoodlum. Ah! All right, two hoodlums mean, hey, at least I could have made a buck off him if I'd hired the security guard, but I didn't. So all three of these guys come over to my park. One of them is a freeloader, but I will get two people. And remember, nobody in my park is going to die because I've got proper security because I had that extra worker. Jen, she draws three, one, two, three. Ah, no hoodlums for her. Um, although still, unfortunately, one of those people is gonna die. So, um, we're all seeing who will visit, and then we decide where they're gonna go. Now, hoodlums, they cut to the front of the line. They have to be placed first. Um, and it doesn't really matter, because all, all the places I could send them just get me points. If I had any restaurants, if I had the uh, Gene Splice hot dog shock, and I sent people here, instead of making points, instead of making one point, they could make $2 for me, but I didn't get that um, instead. So I'll have the hoodlum come over here and get a hat, because he's not going to get to see any cool dinosaurs. And I'll have this guy come over here to the Velociraptor, and this guy to come over here. Because each of my dinosaur attractions only shows one dinosaur, I cannot have any more viewers come here. I can't have two people look at one Velociraptor. I'd have to have a second Velociraptor, then I could have two people. Once I've got four Velociraptors in here, which is very dangerous, as you might imagine, it increases the excitement, but it also increases the threat, I could have four people coming to look at the Velociraptor. But as it is, I'll have one person look at my one Velociraptor, one look at my Amosaurus, nobody's going on my hypercoaster, and I'm having this guy go get a hat. 
So this is kind of a worker placement thing as well. Of course, later on in the game is your excitement level. You can see your excitement level can go up to 20. You might have 20 people showing up. Oh, that's pretty extreme. You'd have to work really, really hard to get that. And then you've got all kinds of places to send them to determine whether you're going to make points or money off of stuff. And then when um, you, I mean, when I want, when I've got pre more people showing up than I've got spaces to send them, that's when this ride designer is going to come in handy because I can put four people in the coaster instead of three. But anyway, so I've assigned my guys. Jen, meanwhile, she is doing the same. And uh, one guy goes to her hat, one looks at her starting, and one looks at her ankylosaur. So she did pretty much the same thing I did. And now we see, uh, oh wait, by the way, everybody who showed up, who's, um, I made two bucks, because two patrons showed up, but the hoodlum, when he showed up, he did not pay to get in, he snuck in. Jen, she got three proper patrons, so she got three bucks. After we get our starting money, then we send them where we want to send them, and um, we see if they die. Remember, my, um, right, so we come back over here, although we've already figured this out ahead of time. Um, my total threat for my two dinosaurs is three, plus the temporary means five. Um, no threat here, so nobody dies in my park. But in Jen's park, she was short one, remember, because her threat, she didn't get her security up high enough, the temporary bumps up here, so one of Jen's visitors... Her choice has to die. And the interesting thing is, hoodlums can't die. They're good at hiding. The same way they're good at sneaking in, they're good at avoiding rampaging dinos. So one of Jen's guys has to die. Now, she still got the money from him when he showed up, but then he went over to the hat store thinking, oh, I'm just going to get a nice souvenir hat. And unbeknownst to him, there was an ankylosaur who trashed the place, stomped him, didn't eat him because it's a uh, herbivore, stomped him. He ended up dying. So that means Jen is not going to get the victory point off of him. And instead of gaining a point, Jen loses one point. Um, but that's it. Um, but she gets one, two points for these two dinosaurs. Um, so, one, two, all right, of course, normally you'd be able to see the victory point marker. So, Jen is now at 11 points, and she's got a ton of money, and meanwhile, over in my, and this guy died, sorry, oh, you should have come to my park, although if you had, yeah, right, so meanwhile, over at my park, everybody's alive, um, I get two points, and this guy gets nothing, because he's just a freeloader. I wouldn't mind if he dies, but again, they're the first in, and they're the last out, so I make two points, but... One, two, that puts me in the lead. I am in the lead. Now, that was it for phase four. Everybody has entertained people. Some people have died. And now the last thing we do is phase five cleanup. Everybody at the parks, whether they lived or died, goes back in the sack to show up for um, next month's attractions. And hopefully we'll get some more dinosaurs or what have you. So everybody goes back. Anything um, in the really cheap row that didn't get bought, in this case, the uh, sunglasses hut, which costs three plus two. It would have been five bucks, and it just would have been worth two victory points. Just uh, you're, you're, You'd be spending five bucks to get two victory points um, because nobody, you cannot assign people here to earn extra points. Nobody bought this. It went away. Everything that remains gets cheaper, and new stuff comes out. Our new specialist and intern. You can place one patron on this card each round to score in victory point. So this is, again, for later in the game, when you are drowning in patrons and you don't have enough places to put them all, you could put one of them on. It's, this is like an extra spot uh, because the intern can give patrons a nice behind-the-scenes tour or something like that. So an intern came out. And let's see. We got Raptor Nuggets. Mmm, delicious. Another food place. And uh, DNA, DNA nachos, DNA nachos, another food place. I want more rides. Take advantage of my ride guy. And one more upgrade, um, a ride improvement. So ride improvement, score twice the number of victory points for patrons at one attraction. So, um, but if I assign two of my workers to this on that round, so I've got a hyper coaster. Later on in the game, I can put up to four people on this, so it would score six points. But during that round, if I put two of my guys on a temporary ride improvement, I would score eight points off of this instead. So that, you can see, is a really nice combo. All right, so ride improvements are out here, but they're incredibly expensive. But again, if nobody buys it, they will become cheaper over time. Um, we get all our scientists back. And, um, right. So th this stuff comes out. We get our scientists back. We re-roll the dice. 
All righty, so we can see what's available. Oh, so this one showed up again. All right, so none of the other special ones showed up again. Like this one's really cool, get an extra worker. But for this really cool one, you have to spend your level three scientists, but then you get a worker for the rest of the game, you can bet. That's gonna be something everybody wants. And now, we have to figure out turn order. Whoever's in last place becomes the new first lead player. So Jen gets first dibs on everything in the market in phases one and two, coming into the next round. Oh, also, um, new herbivores, a, a triceratops. And a ceratosaurus, a ceratosaurus. All righty, a small, all right. So these are out, new um, DNA grabbing opportunities, new opportunities in the market. Let's see, oh, and also both of our plot twists trigger at the end of the round. Each player can choose um, to increase one cold storage limit by one, and we can also get a bonus. Let's see, what cold storage do I want to, let's see, if I just want to make more velociraptors, I want to be able to hold more of this yellow, so I'll just increase this. So I can hold more yellow and make more, because every Velociraptor needs one of these yellows. So we get that. Jen will increase, uh, she'll just go ahead and increase this. Um, because now, for Jen to get that 15 in cold storage, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So that's 12, 13, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Jen could potentially get 15 things in storage if she plays her cards right, um, getting DNA and then also buying DNA in phase two so she could complete the first objective. Remember, this game goes until two of these three objectives have been completed. Doesn't matter who does it. So anyway, so um, we both got uh, that plot twist. We increase our storage and we also can make a choice. Increase our security level. I think Jen's gonna do that so that people don't die again. Uh, upgrade a paddock capacity or get any two DNA. I'm gonna upgrade a paddock capacity. My Velociraptor paddock can only hold one, which means I can't breed another one until I make it bigger, only two, one paper come. I'm gonna increase it. Normally, you would have to um, use a worker in phase three uh, to do this and spend money, but hey, I'm getting it for free. So now, I've got room for two Velociraptors. So I can get a second one, which will increase the threat of my park, but also increase the excitement and the point scoring potential. So we both get a benefit. Jen increased her security, I increased my storage, and we are ready to go to round two. Jen is first, because she's in last place on score. So that's why Jen didn't mind losing a point, having somebody die, because that guaranteed she was gonna be first. And if this had come up, I guarantee you, she would have been desperate to go first, because anybody's gonna take that and increase their workforce for the rest of the game. Um, there's another, what's another special one? Um, like, you know, a triple, three of a kind, or, you know, but the the, this one came up again. So if Jen's first, she wants it bad, um, you know, or other specials, Jen gets first dibs. She purposely lets somebody die, so she would be sure she was first in the next round. We both have an equal excitement level. We both got two dinosaurs. I've got room for another Velociraptor. I'm definitely gonna shoot, shoot for that. I might try to get more storage for my regular guys as well, because maybe I want to race to get the nine dinosaurs and score the seven points. Jen wants to get a lot of DNA, so she can chase for this, because she's got the storage for it now. There's three new dinosaurs available to us, or we could pass, because remember, Jen was really bummed. She didn't have more workers in phase three. So she could have one of her scientists be ready in phase three to do more stuff as well. But folks, I think I'm gonna stop right there because that should give you a pretty good idea of what Dinosaur Island is all about. Now, if you wanna hear some final thoughts, you can hit that A or that I up in the top right corner of the screen or follow the show notes in five, four, three, two, one.